Assalamu alaikum, very good morning to all the viewers. So, thank you for uh, subscribing me for our data communication and networking course. So, today I will continue our lab session with the lab session for module 11. So, today our topic will be lab session for subnetting and IPv4 network. So, hopefully, you guys will stay tuned with me until the end of the video. So for those who have given me likes and subscribe before, so I really really appreciate all your support for my videos. Hopefully this video will benefit even further than my university campus students into other universities as well. So let's start our class. So today, okay, we have our lab sheet here, which is a subnetting and IPv4 network. So, as you see here, I already opened the Cisco Packet Tracer file for this lab session. You can download them in uh, our Google Classroom platform. Okay, so here I will demonstrate to you how to set up a network, topology network, for by subnetting an IPv4 network. So, if you have, uh, you are familiar with uh, subnets and uh, VLSM or any subnetting and VLSM before, so this is a part of demonstration where you use packet tracer to simulate a network and based on the network that you have submitted. So here, okay, once you open the packet tracer activity file, so I have the packet tracer activity file with me. Okay, uh, let me open it a little bit. So, so this is the list of packet tracer activity file already uploaded in our lab session. So today we're going to do 11.5.5, .5, okay, already online in your Google Classroom platform, if you have enroll in your in our university. So you can just open it immediately and you will open two window here. Okay, so this one is the topology window and the bottom one is our instruction window. So today we are going to do this lab. I will demonstrate how to do this lab. Okay, in case uh, you need to check your performance later on, okay, you can compare your performance with mine. Okay, so let's start our lab session now. So in this lab session, based on the instruction, you are given an addressing table and you can see the addressing table is not complete. Okay, you have a lot of empty space here. The not available one is excluded because it's already not available. So you have a lot of empty space. What does this represent? Okay, so this represents devices, okay, interfaces, IP address and the submit mask and also the default gateway of your of the device inside your network. So these devices is as shown here. Okay, you have one, two, three, I uh, want two PC devices, one ISP workstation, one ISP server, and between them you have switches and you have routers here. Okay, so all of them, okay, some of them are assigned IP address, okay, some of them haven't. Okay, so we are going to assign the IP address for those who are not assigned yet. Okay, so let's take a look at the objectives here. Okay, part one, design an IPv4 network submitting scheme. Part two, configure the devices. Part three, test and troubleshoot the network. Okay, so in this activity, you will subnet the customer network into multiple subnets. The subnet scheme, the subnet scheme should be based on the number of host computers required in each subnet as well as other network considerations like future network host expansion. After you have created a submitting scheme and complete the table by filling in the missing host and interface IP address, you will configure the host PCs, switches and router interfaces. After the network devices and host PCs have been configured, you will use the ping command to test for network connectivity. Okay, it doesn't look that difficult to me. Okay, let's try and look into the instruction here. So firstly, you need to subnet the assigned network. Okay, create a subnet scheme that meet the requirement number of subnets and required number of host addresses. So here, okay, you are a network technician assigned to install a new network for a customer. You must create multiple subnets out of this IP address network address. 
okay, to meet the following requirement. Your first subnet is a LAN A network, LAN A which is this part. <coughs> you need a minimum of 50 host IP addresses here. And the second subnet is the LAN B network, so which you need 40 host IP addresses here. Okay, you also need at least two additional unused subnet for future network expansion. Means you have to include two more here, maybe in the future. So now, okay, in this case, we variable length subnet mask, which is via VLSM, we will not use. Okay, we only use uh, the common uh, the, the normal subnetting method. Okay, all the device subnet mask should be the same length. Okay. So VLSM, you have different subnet masks for each network, subnetworks, but this time we are going to use the same subnet mask for all the networks, for all the subnetworks, okay? So answer the following question to help create a subnet scheme that meet the stated network requirements. How many host addresses are needed in largest required subnet? What is the number of subnets required? Okay, so then the network task, what is the slash... 24 subnet mask in binary, okay, okay, subnet mask made of two portion, network portion, and the host portion, okay, I think, uh, let me demonstrate it this way, okay, I have my slides here, this one is based on my uh, lecture slides, which I modified for this uh, purpose, okay, so basically you have this host, uh, this not host address, it's a network address, I'm sorry, mistaken here, network address, Okay, 192.168.0.0 slash 24 you have here. So you need at least four subnets with 62 usable hosts each. Why you need 62 usable hosts each? Okay, so now you see that minimum 50, minimum 40. Why did I mention 62? This is because based on the power of 2 table, the closest power of 2 250, the maximum one, is 62. You cannot choose 32 because 32 is less than 50. So you have to choose more, which is 64. Okay? But you need to remember, okay, uh, you need to remember that for each subnet, they must have at least one network address and one broadcast address. So you subtract by two, you need at least 62 for each subnet. So you have this network address and you have this subnet mask. So firstly, let's take a look at the binary first. Okay, this is the binary of the subnet address and the subnet mask. Okay. Okay. So in this case, okay, for four subnets, we are going to borrow two host portion. Okay, two host portion. Okay, right now, slash 24 means that up until 24 bits, of the address is for network portion based on the subnet mask. So eight bits for the host portion. So we want to increase the subnet, uh, the network portion so that we can split it into four subnets. So we're going to borrow two bits from the host portion for our network portion. So now our new subnet mask will be 192. Okay, so this one is our sub network portion and this one is host portion. So to summarize it, we will borrow two bits for our subnet bits. Okay, and the number of subnetwork is equal to power of this two bit. We call four, so you will have four subnets. And the number of host bits that you have is the remaining host portion bits, which is six. And the number of usable hosts you can get is two power of the host bits, two power of six. Subtract with 2, which is the reserve for network address and broadcast address. So the remaining usable host will be 62. So to summarize this, by changing the subnet mask to 255.255.255.192, you will create 4 subnets with 62 usable hosts each. Okay. So now, instead of slash 24, it will become slash 26. Okay, so now if we conduct all the necessary calculation, okay, we will get this kind of subnets here. Okay, you will see uh, better for you to start with the network address first. Okay, you have four network address for this from this uh, 
from this new address okay so you need to remember because you borrow two bits you will have four subnets so you need means that you will have four network address for each sub four network address that represent each subnets okay so what are the network address okay so you need to remember that we will look into the last network bit location the network portion location which is the bit number two the two power of six bit okay one zero two power of zero two power of one two power of two two power of three two power of four two power of five two power of six so this is two power of six so based on the two power of six our magic number is 64. so from the original network address you add 64 okay into the original address so you get the subnet number two and then you add 64 another 64 from this one you get subnet number three and then you add another 64 you get the subnet number four okay so these are the new address for all the subnets so from this okay try to create your broadcast address so your broadcast address will be for subnet one is one bit before one address before subnet number two new address so which means that dot 63 okay for subnet number two which means dot 127 for some number uh, number three means that dot one 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 and some number four means that dot two five five which is the last number in the network range so anything in the middle of the network address and the broadcast address is called the usable host range means that here for example from one until 62 you will have 62 network address for you to use as uh, under your end devices okay so based on this we will create this network okay so let's uh let's open uh, this network first okay so uh, this uh, file okay so when i insert them okay so let's take a look at uh, this one first okay let's take a look at this file Okay, so you have okay, you have calculated everything. So now let's answer the question here. So answer the following question to have created a submitting scheme that meets the stated network requirement. How many host address are needed in the largest required subnets? So which means that the largest required one is 50. So what is the minimum number of subnets required? So the requirements stated above specify two company networks plus two additional networks for future expansion. So the answer minimum is four networks. So as I mentioned before, we need four networks. So the networks that the network that you are tasked to subnet is 192.168.0.0/24. What is the slash 24 submit mass in binary? So submit mass in binary is same as I showed before which is okay which is this number 255 255 255 0 so this one is the submit mass in binary okay so the submit mass is made of two portion network portion and host portion okay this is represented in the binary by the ones and the zero in the submit mass in the network mass what does one represent this means that once represent network portion okay in this subnet mass once represent network portion and zeros represent the host portion okay to subnet a network bits from the host position of the original network mass are changed into subnet bits the number of subnet bits defines the number of subnets given each of the possible subnet must be in the following binary format how many subnets how many hosts are created in each example so example we have this example here okay this one is slash 25 okay remember that the number of host bits to the power of 2 defines the number of hosts per subnet minus 2 okay so because we have uh, subtracting the network address and also the broadcast address and the number of subnet bits to the power of 2 defines number of subnets so number of subnets we don't need to subtract with anything so the subnet bits shown in bold are the bits that have been borrowed beyond the original network mass of slash 24 so this 
slash 24 is the prefix notation correspond to the dotted decimal mass of 255255525. Okay, so this one slash 25 means this bit here is increased from the slash 24. Okay, so means that bit borrowed is 1. Okay, so the dotted decimal sum and mass equivalent to, okay, if you translate this into a decimal, means that dot 1 to 8. Number of subnets is 2 power of 1, number of hosts is 2 power of 7. Okay, this is what I've uh, demonstrated before in the PowerPoint. And, okay, in case of slash 26, borrow 2, it becomes, the, the, the decimal for this one will become 1 by 2. Okay, you will get 4 subnets and 64 hosts. Okay, which is uh, minus with 2, you will got 62 hosts per subnet. Okay. And then here, for slash 27, you borrow 3, you've got the subnet must is 2 to 4. Okay, you will have 8 subnets and 32 hosts. Okay, and with subscribe with 2, we got 30 hosts per subnet. Slash 28, you borrow 4, you got the subnet mass at the end is 240. 6 subnets and 14 hosts per subnet after the deduction of new address and broadcast address. Then you have 5 borrowed bits, okay. Here is slash 29, you have the subnet mass add with slash uh, dot 248. You will have 32 subnets with 8 hosts each. Okay, subscribe with 2, you got 6 hosts per subnet. Okay, 6 usable hosts per subnet. Basically. So in next slash 30, okay, the subnet mass 252. Okay, you have a 64 subnet and 4 hosts, which means uh, subscribe with 2, you got 2 hosts per subnets. Okay. Considering your answer above, which subnet must meet the requirement number of minimum host addresses? Okay. Minimum host addresses. Okay. If you see at minimum host addresses, okay, you will get slash 25 and slash 26. You get 1 to 6 and 62. Okay. Uh, so then we look at Considering your answer above, which subnets must meet the requirement of subnets required? Okay, of subnets required means the number of subnets required. So, the number of subnets required is 26. You can put 4, 8, 16, 32, and 4, 8, okay, uh, 4, 8, 16, 32, okay, 64. Okay, this one you can choose for your new subnets. Okay, considering your answer above, which subnet mass meets both the required minimum number of hosts and minimum required of subnets? So both required number of hosts and subnets, the most fulfilled one is slash 26. So it means that what I did before, okay, represent what should be in your network. Okay, so this is the, the answer for your task. So if you fill in everything that we have obtained before here, Okay, put it inside the network, you will get this one. Okay, so when you determine the subnet mass meets the requirement, the network requirements, derive each of these subnets. Okay, this one we derive only three subnets for now. So now let's fill in the missing IP address in the address table. Okay, so we have we have Okay, we have this, uh, sorry, so we have this instruction to which, okay. So use the first host address for customer router, use second host address for LAN A switches, uh, use the last host address for PCA, okay, uh, assign second subnet to LAN B, okay, and then use first host address for customer router interface connection, LAN B, Use second host address for LAN B switch. Use last host address for PCB. Okay. So now, if you follow all this instruction, you will get the table to be look like this. Okay. You fill in. Okay. You got this. So you will have all the table looks like this. So this one is the router G00. So G00 will be, I think, uh, for G00. Okay, G00 will be the link with PCA here, okay, for router. 
G01, okay, will be with PCB, okay, yeah. So this one is for the router, okay, the IP address for the router to this. So and then you have LAN A and LAN B. So LAN A, you will have 0, 2, okay, here for LAN A. And then for LAN B is for uh, dot sixty six, okay, PCA dot sixty two, PCB dot one two six, okay. So let's take a look at setting up the. Um, I think we should go with the instruction first, okay. So here, okay, let's configure the device. Configure the customer router first. Okay, set the enable secret password on customer router to class 123. So, double click the customer router and enter the command line interface. Okay. Okay. So, you open the router. Okay, so for here, you need to enable to enter the privilege mode and to configure terminal. Okay, from here, you need to put in secret password enable secret class one two three okay then it. okay so you want to enter again if you exit you enter in publish mode you need the password you just put in class one two three so you enter the privilege mode. So we have uh, created the password for the secret. So then set the console login password. Okay, console login password. So you enter configure terminal. Line console zero password. Cisco one two three. Log in. Remember to log in if you do something for line. Is it? Is it? Is it? So then here you see you need class one two three. Oh, class three. Oh, sorry. This is Cisco one two three. Yes, this one is for your console. Uh, for logging, uh, you. You, you want to enter the console and then you put in enable and your password will be class123 okay so both password is already activated and now you need to change your customer router name okay so changing the router name will be host name no configure terminal host name customer router so you have finished configuring your router. Exit. So exit. So here you have the password Cisco123 and the customer router enable you got class 123. So in privilege mode. So setting up your router is almost finished because we haven't assigned the IP address yet. Okay. Configure the G00 and G01 interface with IP address and submit mask and then enable them. Okay, so how exactly you are going to, to set the G00 and G01? Okay, so I have these notes here. Okay, so here you just type in according to this note. Okay, so we already completed the, the uh, password. Area. So let's focus on the interface. So you need to be in configure mode. Enable. Okay, configure tab. Configure terminal. Okay. So it's easier for you to have notes like this when you want to do uh, when you want to do something so that you will not miss what you did. Okay. Sometimes I I also will miss something when I I start doing it. Okay. So yeah, you just type in interface gigabit and then net zero slash zero the IP address one and two dot one six eight dot zero 
Number one, this subnet must never forget the subnet list. This one defines your network size. Okay, IP address. I I miss this space here. Okay, now no shutdown to activate it immediately. Okay, we finish with number one and we uh, number zero the zero zero and let's for proceed to zero one interface gigabit and then net zero slash one. Where did I make mistakes? Oh, okay, I forgot to space. Okay, so put in an IP address 192.168.0.65.255.255.255.192 Again, no shutdown. Okay, lastly, your serial connection. Okay, your serial connection will be from this one okay, to this one. Okay, so based on your design here, your serial connection, ISP router G00 here. Uh, S0010 here. Okay, so this is ISP connector for ISP router for your customer router. Okay. So let's proceed uh, with we are setting up the router. Lastly, interface. Interface serial zero slash one slash zero. IP address two zero nine dot one six five dot two zero one dot two two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot two five two. Okay, so if you enter this, oh, miss the space. Okay, so no shutdown to activate it immediately, and you're finished. Okay, so let's take a look at your router. Okay, show on the config to make sure that everything works well. So your password already in secret. Okay, sorry. So, is there, yeah, so gigabit at the net, G00 and G01 already, uh, already activated, serial is already activated. Okay, so, password for console already activated, so we are finished with our router. So, next, let's activate our LAN. So LAN A, which means your switch. Okay, so let's take a look at the instruction back. Okay, so finish everything from your router. So what do you need for your switches? Configure the IP address on interface VLAN 1 and the two customer LAN switches. Make sure to configure the correct default gateway on each switches. Okay, so this is the switches and this will be the gateway. Okay, gateway. So let's look at your your uh, LAN A. So here I'm also made any notes, just in case for me to forget something. So double click on LAN A, on line interface. So you open your switch. Okay. So for your LAN A here. Okay, type in any verb for your access, then configure terminal. Interface DLAN1. IP address 192.168.0.2.255.255.255.192. No shutdown. And 
just put in IP default gateway for like two dot one six eight dot zero dot one. Okay, you finish with switch for LAN A. So while we are here, why not just change the 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 switch name as well? Okay, so go to the terminal, host name, switch to LAN A. Okay, we finish. A. Okay, so we stop it for now. Then we proceed to it LAN B. Okay, open command line interface. So here's the same thing we did with LAN A. Configure terminal. Interface. Here LAN 1. IP address on the two dot one six eight dot zero dot sixty six two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot one nine two. Okay, so no shutdown and the default gateway is Finish with your LAN A. Okay, LAN A also finish, LAN B also finish. So let's change your PCA and PCB IP address. Oops. Okay, your PCA and PCB next will be PCA first. Go towards oh, desktop, change the IP address. So your IP address just now will be for PCA is okay, 192.168.0.63. Okay, you don't need to put the submit mouse here. Okay. You have to put in your submit mask according to this one. Okay, uh, submit mask. You didn't have to put prefix, but you better put in submit mask here. I'm not sure whether you prefix can or not, so you just try. You cannot. So you have to calculate again. Slash 26 that you have calculated before. Okay, so slash 26, okay, the submit mask will be 192. Okay, 192 here. So put in the 192 down here. 192.168.0.63. Okay, this is 192. Default gateway. Very IP. Supposedly, that you should be able to put it. Mm -hmm. Something not right here. Put in default gateway here. 
So let's just miss out the submit box here for purpose. Okay, so for PCB. Two dot one six eight dot zero dot one two six sub mass it is supposed to be one nine two. Oh this one can mm, is there any problem that I need here? I think there are some problem with this uh, setting of the exercise, but never mind, you can just proceed. Supposedly it should be able to do that, maybe a little bit problem with the exercise. Okay, so we finish everything of PCB, we forgot to, to put in the default gateway here. Yeah. 192. Okay, so we've seen everything is green, and let's check out our results. So our result is 91%. For PCA, IP address and submit must is incorrect, so there must be something wrong there. So with my PCA, so let's take a look at PCA here. So PCA, the IP address is incorrect or not? PCA is supposed to be 62, not 63. Yes. And that was my mistake there. 192. Okay, so this is one of the common mistakes that you will get when you do the skill based test later on. Okay, so if you see here, okay, so now my completion is already on 100%. So I have completed everything. So good luck. Try it by yourself. Okay, compare your result with mine and hopefully you will get a good grade for your assessment later on. So here, as you can see, for your test here, you can see that, oh, you did I did get most of this. So this is one of the important lab exercise for us to do, for you to do, okay, in, uh, for preparation for your skill-based test number one. That will be held soon okay according to the timeline that we have for our syllabus so i think that's all for today i see you guys uh next in my next video so good luck for your assessment soon okay so just uh, a friendly message for me to stay safe stay at home and stay study i'll see you guys in my next video bye bye